Live from our studio headquarters, deep in the hormonal hub of the body, the hypothalamus, it's Nano News with your hosts, CAMP and S100. Breaking news as we follow up on the leutrophin surge we covered earlier yesterday at the anterior pituitary. It seems big changes are in the works downstream in the oviduct. We go to field reporter ZP3, a glycoprotein responsible for the species-specific binding of sperm to the mature oocyte zona pellicata. Thanks, S100. For the past six hours, there have been rumors of a large number of spermatozoa making their way to... Wait, here they come now. When a sperm gets close enough, it can bind to the zona pellucata. Look, that wave-like posture scene was the ovum's response to a successful fusion. We see P3 stimulate the acrosome reaction by triggering an influx of calcium ions into the sperm's cytoplasm. The rush of calcium ions induced the exocytosis of hydrolytic enzymes, which seem to help the sperm burrow through the zona. A simultaneous depolarization of the egg's plasma membrane coincides with the halo-like fertilization envelope you can see surrounding the egg. The acrosome reaction and its after effects acts as a fast primary block to a second sperm egg fusion. Thanks, CP3. It's incredible how much those calcium ions do around here. On a related note, we've received word that a secondary long-term block to polyspermy has been activated thanks to that calcium ion wave. During the cortical reaction, enzymes are released that harden the zona pellucata so that sperm can no longer bind to it. Why is the prevention of polysperm so important, CP3? Well, the best case scenario will result in mosaicism. Most of the time, however, polysperm is fatal to the embryo since extra mitotic spindles are formed, resulting in faulty segregation of chromosomes. Even if the chromosomes manage to segregate properly, the resulting cells will be triploid. Triploid embryos rarely survive longer than three months, and the few that survive to term are stillborn or die soon after birth. Early indications are coming in that the zona has successfully hardened and polyspermy has been prevented. In other news, ciliated epithelial cells all along the oviduct are calling in to express their astonishment at the sheer number of strained flagellated cells and their highly condensed haploid chromosomes. A word of reassurance to any macromolecules worried about the foreign cells. The Lymphocyte Defense League has released an official statement and deemed the gametes not a threat. Many molecules unaccustomed to encountering anything other than somatic cells have expressed concern for the unusual germ cells as these events continue to unfold. For expert analysis of how and why gametes end up with their haploid chromosome number, we turn to Gen 1, a holiday junction resolve base, and CDC20, a regulatory protein best known for its essential role in chromosome separation. Glad to be here, Nano News. Likewise. On the issue of chromosome number of these gametes, we all know the reduction division is completed during prophase 1 of meiosis, and that without it, a chaotic blend of polyploidy and chromosomal proliferation would result. But is there a further benefit of meiosis? I'm glad that you asked that, S100, because it turns out that the benefits of sexual reproduction are so far-reaching that practically all complex organisms evolve through sexual rather than asexual means. The main reason for this is recombination, that is, the reshuffling of alleles that occurs during crossing over. A homogeneous population with identical genotypes might work for simple organisms in a relatively stable environment, but since most environments are unpredictably variable, heterogeneous, sometimes even polymorphic, species are favored. That's a rather limited view of the issue, I'm afraid. Some proteins just can't see beyond the one reaction to catalyze. I resent that. As you should. However, if I may continue uninterrupted, all this frivolous talk of all complex organisms would not be possible were it not for the hardworking regulatory proteins like myself. Without checkpoints and cell division, aneuploidy would be intolerably frequent and life, even the so-called simple life, could not exist. At least being specialized means I can focus. You didn't even address the question. Because it was uninteresting. And moving on. Here at Nano News, we're always receiving feedback from all around the body, and a protein called MPF asks us this question. One thing I've always found curious about meiosis is how long it takes. While mitosis can be finished in less than an hour, it takes primary spermatocytes 24 days to complete meiosis. What's really going on, and why does it take so long? I'm best suited to be answering this one. Prophase 1 alone occupies 90% or more of the time taken by meiosis. Pacatine defined by the presence of a fully formed synatinemal complex, takes up a majority of prophase 1. But to answer your question more directly, crossing over is what's going on. Prophase 1 takes so long, on average, two or three crossover events take place on each homologous chromosome pair. 
First, the duplicate homologous chromosomes must find each other and pair to form equivalents. After the paired homologs condense, the synaptic nemo complex begins to develop, and of course, pachytene is where the real action is. It starts out with a special endonuclease, creating a double strand break near a region of homologous sequence. After processing by an exonuclease, two single strands of DNA are left dangling in search of something to pair with. To prevent such a single strand from, you know, pairing with itself, a protein called rath one catalyzes synapsis and branch migration. My job is to end the cross strand exchange by cutting the strands connecting the two helices in a holiday junction. Recombination fosters variety, but it also acts as a proofreading and repair mechanism. The same process, indeed, many of the same proteins mediate response to certain types of DNA damage and meiotic recombination. Very interesting. It seems life is always finding new uses for old tools, and Nano News is here to help molecules make sense of it all. In case you're just joining us, moments ago in the overduct, a sperm cell managed to reach the zona pellucata and deposit its haploid nucleus, centrosome, and microtubule packed axonemes. That's right, S100. And if I remember my developmental history classes correctly, the secondary oocyte's nucleus was actually halted in metaphase 2. It seems that the events of fertilization are triggering the completion of meiosis and formation of two pronuclei. A lot can go wrong in meiosis. If non-destruction occurs in either of the two stages, the consequences for the zygote can be severe, even fatal. CDC 20. What mechanisms are in place to help prevent non-disjunction? Gentlemen might not realize it, but all the hacking apart and reshuffling catalyzed by Rad51 and friends is good for more than just resorting alleles. It also serves to ensure the duplicated homologs are held together thanks to the chiasmata created in crossing over events. Of course, the really important work of chromosome seg segregation is performed by regulatory proteins like myself. Duplicated homologs are held together by chiasmata only because the arms of sister chromatids are stuck together by class molecules called cohesions. There are meiosis-specific subtypes to allow for sequential separation of homologs, followed by a separation of sister chromatids. Without these cohesion proteins, resisting the pulling of the kinetic core microtubules, chromosomes might separate prior to metaphase. Instead of synchronously, and severe abnormalities will result. Instead, the separation of chromosomes happens in concert, a unanimous motion so harmonious that if even one kinetic core remains attached, the orchestra remains silent. Watch and try to call up this coordinate. I'll admit, it's very impressive, and I understand why a heteroduplex joint doesn't appeal to perfectionist protein like yourself. However, my colleagues and I don't just bounce around creating double strand breaks and recombining entirely at random. 